When I think of <clears throat> Glenn Beck, I think of exactly Abby Hoffman. I okay. have the exact same feeling towards that because it seems like underneath there is a real political agenda, there is real emotion, there is real thought, and then while it starts happening, and you could say this is a negative, uh, but I don't think it is, when the excitement of public attention and the excitement of getting laughs and the excitement of having people talk about you happens, there's a certain kind of person that just ramps it up. And sometimes when they ramp it up... It goes to 11. Up, what's that? It goes to 11. Exactly. When they ramp it up, it gets kind of beautiful. And you see that with even small controversies like they're having here at TAM with some of the women that got a little attention for not coming and then got really excited about that attention. And it's really, really fun. Now, if you give that attention to someone who has the right skill set, and I mean, I would put Abby Hoffman way above Glenn Beck, but you give someone with that skill set, the combination of a real moral base, a huge amount of talent, and then you add into that the look at me, look at me, look at me right. type thing, right. you get someone who is saying stuff that at some level they don't really believe. Right. And it's they don't expect to really be part of the serious conversation, right. but they know that getting it out there, they know that getting your father yelling about it right. is in some way right. valid. Right, yes. And yes. Uh, the other thing is the word context um, is very, very different with people like Glenn Beck and, uh, and Howard Stern and, uh, and Abby Hoffman because context for the fans is much, much bigger. When they try to play a Stern clip back when he was really controversial you know, mm -hmm. in the 80s, mm -hmm. they tried to play a stern clip in context. So someone would rip something he said out of context and would be horribly um, racist or sexist or whatever they were accusing him of at that time. And they would, somebody would rip it out of context. And then someone else, in order to be fair, would give you the context. And that context would be a paragraph or two paragraphs or if they're really really honest it might be four paragraphs and I would always read that it, and it say it could even be setting <laughs> What's that? you could even be setting where it was said yeah, the, exactly. the place but, it happened but at. What, what my point was always with Stern that the context for him has to be three years and it has to be three years <laughs> of yes. four hours a day yes uh, yes five yeah, days yeah, a week yeah. and I'm not kidding yeah. in any yeah. way because it's like your, your your uncle comes to Thanksgiving and you've known him and loved him for like 20 years. And he's your favorite uncle. And he's sitting there and he says something absolutely appalling. That Nixon got a hell of a break. Why don't they get off his back? Right? <laughs> you know, something just insane. Clinton was a good president. Something that just nobody, you know, could possibly condone. And what you hear then is you hear this kind of love of his heart. The nice thing he's done for your, you know, for your aunt, the, uh, the the way he treated, you know, your cousins. Yeah, it's 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 interesting. It, it, the context also allows you to give him or whoever the person is acceptance. Yeah, yeah, and you kind yeah. of do that. So when someone's been listening to Howard Stern for years, right, and they hear him talk about his children and his wife, and they hear his relationship with Robin, not just he has an African-American woman that's in the booth that he makes jokes with, but really hear that relationship as she goes through uh, ups and downs and so on, and he relates with all those people and all the callers. You have a relationship that is not like saying, here is a, here, here's an, you know, here's an hour uh, play, here's right. a two hour play, and this is one of the lines from it, and here's the context. There's this whole ongoing thing. And when I was a, 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 a even as a child, you know, 12, 13 years old, we were paying attention to, uh, to uh, Abby Hoffman, you know, and it was so important. I knew stuff about Abby Hoffman that allowed him to say stuff that was clearly outside of my morality right. and still dig it and kind of go with it. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to tell people who will be saying, you know, how can you go on Glenn Beck after he said this, this, and this? I say, well, you know, I've spent hours with him and you get a different, yes, I disagree with that that he said. And indeed, I probably disagree with 
everything he said about it. But there's some sort of um, humanity that comes out in the context. Do you think Tommy Smothers is listening to this? <laughs> I, get, oh, this, is what I'll, this I, I can also tell you this. After uh, Tommy Smothers, and Tommy Smothers' point, just so I can uh, repeat it again, Tommy Smothers' point was 100% right. His point was that by going on Glenn Beck, who Tommy Smothers disagrees with very strongly, by simply going on Glenn Beck, I was giving uh, Glenn Beck... Uh, some of my respect because I showed up on the show. Right, and your audience. And yeah, your, I'm giving him all that, and, and that yeah. that is morally wrong, and Tommy Smothers is 100% right about that. But at the same time, I think I'm the only person that ever went on Glenn Beck and said, there is no God. And I think I'm the only person that Glenn Beck said, here's an atheist that I really like. And that's also has a validity. And the irony is that you were essentially going someplace. You were preaching not to the choir. Mm -hmm. You went to speak your mind to an audience that's not yours, which is essentially what the Smothers Brothers did on primetime on CBS. Well, you know, those are the points I was kind of you yeah. Know, yeah. yeah. And, Thanks uh, for screwing up the whole thing, Preventer. <laughs> He's been setting that up for thirty minutes now. <laughs> uh, I, I believe you'll find he'd been set up for about three years now. <laughs> And that's what I mean by context. Yes, there you go. It has to be a big hunk of context. But both of those are... Um, are uh, but it is a tricky question, though, because you also, you also did a, a video blog about it shortly mm -hmm. afterwards uh, where you went down that line. And, and it is a very interesting question. It really is. It's, tough. it's a tough call to you make. You know, and then Tommy's but, but mother's... Then, Tommy had that, had that you know, uh, logical extension, which was, oh, well, if Hitler had a radio show, would you go and do that? Little did he know that your answer was... Yeah. And I said, that, I said that to him. I know. I said yes, and I would tell the truth. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to put a cap around this that I haven't talked about publicly, which I, I think is pretty interesting. After the green room happened, I got a long email from Glenn Beck. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And he said, uh, and I, I even feel that some of it was so heartfelt and so personal that I don't even want to paraphrase it here, certainly not quote it. But the gist of it was... I'm very, very sorry that you were in that position. Tommy Smothers is a hero of mine, too. Oh, and wow. And sitting at home watching the green room, it broke my heart. And the guilt that I felt from putting you in that position was overwhelming. Maybe I shouldn't have had you on the show if it was <laughs> going to cause that much trouble with people like Tommy. And I'll never be able to tell him, but I love Tommy Smothers, and he was a huge influence on me. Wow. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, and that's what I'm talking about with the context of Glenn Beck, because yeah, yeah, yeah. the screaming, crying, fucked up Mormon saying crazy shit is all show business. It's show business, but he's also a person. Yeah. You know, who would be watching the green room and going, oh, man, <laughs> you know, yow, he's being busted for just going on my show. <laughs> I am my show. Oh, man, maybe I am an asshole.